let me give you a premise. Let's say I'm saying this Lego block is white. Mm -hmm. In classical logic, you say you just have to count up to two. Mm -hmm. What are the two possible outcomes <laughs> you could have in this? Uh, well, the statement you just made is either true or false. That's it. That's it. That's it. So in classical logic, this Lego block is white, could either be true or false. Correct. That's it. And the opposite of not true is always going to be false. The opposite of not false is always going to be true in classical logic. Correct. Okay. Let's bring non-classical logic into the picture to create that contrast. So now if I'm saying the same thing, the Lego block is white, in non-classical logic could be true, false, and there's a third value? Well, okay, th there are many non-classical logics and they work on very different principles. But um, a, a major kind of non-classical logic, of, and there are many logics of this kind, is called many-valued logic, okay? And in many-valued logic, you go beyond the... the ability to count up to two. So it might be three, four, sometimes more, um, possibly even infinitely many. Okay. And we'll come back to that, I guess. Um, so your question was, what might there be beyond the two? So let me answer that question. Um, a very standard four-valued logic has four values, true and true only, False and false only, both or neither. Those are the four values. And you find that in ancient Buddhist and Indian thought too, but that's another story. We can talk about that if you want to. So um, four-valued logic hasn't found a lot of favour in the history of logic because it's been heavily influenced by two. But ironically, the first person to countenance three true, false, and neither, was Aristotle himself, who in a, a rather notorious chapter of one of his texts, De Interpretatione, chapter 9, said, you know, what about some of these things about the future that are not determined yet? So let me update this slightly. Will the war in Ukraine be going on at the end of 2025? Okay. Um, some things are about the end of 2025 are pretty determinate. We now know that the sun is going to rise on the 1st of December, but the war in Ukraine, well, said Aristotle, the statement the war in Ukraine is going on at the end of 2025 is now neither true nor false. Of course, at the end of 2025, it will become either true or false, but um, now it's neither true nor false. So he, he plays with this third value, and there were debates about that in the Middle Ages, but generally speaking, the techniques you need to develop that came with a revolution in logic at the beginning of the 20th century. So, I sorry, that's the answer to your question, how there could be more than two. So this is intuitionistic logic, the one which has true, false, and neither? No, no. Uh, intuitionist logic is not a finitely many-valued logic. That's something you can prove quite easily. Okay. So uh, that is... It's true that intuitionists think that some mathematical assertions um, which cannot at the moment be proved or refuted, you can't prove either them or the negation, it would be wrong to say that one of those is... That, that they tend to identify truth with provability. So if you can't prove uh, a, stent, a sentence or its negation... They, they think, well, then, then there's a pretty clear sense in which neither of those is true. So in a sense, you do get violations of, of the principle of excluded middle, which says everything is either one or either true or zero, or either one or zero, either true or false. So they, they have a logic which builds on that insight. However, intuitionist logic is not a, many, not a finitely many-valued logic. So this actually belongs to a different class of logic and the techniques you need to handle that tend to be rather different. Um, we can go into those if you want, but just take my word for it. I'll take your word for it. But okay, so just to link on the subset, in this one subset of, I guess, intuitionist logic, when I'm saying this Lego block is white, if I can't prove it's true or false, then the default setting is neither, right? So the proof plays a very important role for, for intuitionists, for philosophical reason, they, they identified essentially truth with proof. 
And if something is neither provable nor refutable, otherwise you can't prove its opposite, its negation, then neither of those is true, at least while we have no proof. Um, but if you think, if, you're, if you don't identify truth with proof, you can think, well, one of these can be true. We just don't know which yet. We haven't found it. And so a big debate between intuitionists and sort of classical logicians was precisely whether you should identify truth with provability. And a number of philosophers in the 20th century thought it, we should identify truth with provability, not just intuitionists. Um, so there's a school of philosophers called the Logical Positivists in Austria, yeah. um, and then later in the Anglosphere, uh, who, who tended to identify truth with verification, yep. uh, which is in mathematics provability. Um, so uh, some philosophers have identified truth with provability. It's, it's a thesis about truth, the nature of truth, and therefore contentious. Um, and a lot of philosophers will reject that identification. So this is one of the things which drive debates between intuitionist logicians and classical logicians and others. 